Juggling motherhood and modern day life can be stressful and relentless, but it doesn't need to be this way. The Joy of Being podcast is the answer to maternal mental health, bringing sustainable relief and calm to hardworking mums everywhere so that you your family and work can thrive. My name is Marina Pearson and I'm your host, transformational coach and mum who loves to interview business owners, transformational professionals and creatives to have insightful conversations about what it takes to really live a life that is thriving, fulfilling and full of joy. And as the summer holidays have finally sprung upon us, I've decided to dedicate the following weeks to picking the most popular shows to create the Stay Sane Summer Series to help those of you who find this time of year a bit hellish to give you your sanity back. And if you're feeling like you're going nuts are thinking, I just need a fucking break and want a quick sustainable fix, you're in luck as I'm gifting an instant mum relief accelerator call worth £500 to 25 lucky hardworking mums who want some instant relief from the madness. If that is you, go to bit.ly slash instant mum relief. That's bit.ly slash instant mum relief where you can book your call. You can also find the link in the show notes. So on today, show, I've invited Leanne McDonald and Julie Brown. And how all this came about was because I saw Leanne sharing a post on Facebook group, Meba Mums in Business Association, talking about looking for sponsors for her My Mental Health Rocks. Now, what the campaign is all about is taking the three principal understanding into schools, but for younger kids. So from ages of four upwards. And if you're wondering what the three principles are, and this is your first episode that you're listening to, then welcome. And the three principles are basically mind, consciousness, and thought, and they govern how we experience life. But their mission is to really help kids see that they're not feeling anything other than they're thinking in the moment. They also want kids to see that they have resid- everything they need in order to cope with life as we do with adults. And they want kids to really understand who they truly are and the confidence and the resilience that resides inside. So caveat, Leanne, and did drop off, but it's an amazing episode regardless of that. And Julie and I delved into a personal situation that I've been experiencing that I thought would be a great example if you as a mom are going through or a parent are going through some challenges with your kids when they are young, because they have big feelings and sometimes they act them out. So with Julie's amazing experience and the workshops that she's done with kids and coaching parents. This is a beautiful episode where we delve into how thought actually works out for our little ones. So if you'd like to know how you can guide your children back to their full resilience, their confidence, their well-being, then this is going to be a great episode for you to keep sane enjoy. So welcome everybody. On today's show, I have Julie Brown and Leanne McDonald. And to be honest, it's been like a bit of a whirlwind because we only connected about a week ago. And I saw a post that they had on Meba, which is uh, Mums in Business Association on Facebook. They were asking for support to their campaign, which is my Mental Health Rocks campaign. So I got a little bit more curious about what that what they're doing. And I've been blown away by by their vision, but also it's just so in line with what the podcast is about that I thought I'd bring them on to get to know a little bit more about this campaign, but more how we can bring, how we as parents, especially as mamas, we can, we can bring our understanding to our children and how we can help them. Because as a mum with a four and a half year old who has weird and wonderful behaviors, in fact, very recently I got called in on Tuesday because he had hurt another kid. And so yeah, there's stuff that sort of comes up, right? And then you're like, ah, so I know this understanding has made huge, huge, huge dent in my universe, but a good one. <laughs> a good one. And so I thought I'd bring them on to talk about the campaign, but also as mums and working with mums and teachers and kids, I thought that they would be amazing women to ask about moments when they are difficult with our little ones. So welcome both of you, Julie and Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I'm really curious from both of your perspectives, because I know that you got together because you live in the same area in the UK, but I'm really curious about what this My Mental Health Rock campaign is all about and why you felt it was really important. So I'm, I'm going to ask Julie first. 
And then Leanne, go for it. <laughs> okay. I was expecting it to be the other way around. So. Well, I'm happy to have it the other way around. Don't worry, girls. Well, yeah, we'll pop with the other no. way around because the actual My Mental Health Rock was from Leanne's idea. So I think it's only fair that Leanne actually but, okay. explains that, yeah. Go for it, Leanne. Okay, so the campaign came about because just going into schools and seeing how many children were being referred or it seems to be that there's a lot of firefighting going on when it comes to children's emotions and mental well-being and not a lot of it's very reactive rather than proactive and helping them understand how they get to that point in the first place so I came up with a little activity that included a rock which was symbolic to our innate well-being so that's where the name came from so my mental health rocks and then the camp pain has kind of taken off from there so the activity was to help children understand the characteristics of their well-being we painted a rainbow and each color of the rainbow represented each of those characteristics I'm so passionate so is Julie it's lovely to meet somebody who's who's got exactly the same kind of mission and mindset about going in and making a humongous not just like going in a couple of schools making a humongous huge impact in every single school across the UK because we just see so many benefits to the teachers, the parents, the government. You know, if we can go in and help children understand how they are experiencing life, taking that fear out of the emotions that they're going through, Mm -hmm. helping them to understand, you know, the nature of their thoughts and the nature of their moods, etc. It has a positive impact on the environment, on the government, on the NHS, you know, there's just, that's why we're so passionate in getting into schools to, to make this huge change to make this huge awareness mm. among among the whole community not just the children we want parents involved we want teachers involved we want youth leaders involved we want community members involved because it just it's like cuts out so much more conversation around talking constantly around how a child feels why do they feel that way and it's, it's kind of getting in before that, before they need to be referred, before they need to, before any fires need to be put out and just giving them the knowledge so that they can be empowered to just go and live their life. And so what ages are you looking to work with? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, going into primary school, so from the age of five right up through to high school, so up to the age of uh, 17, 18. And we want to go into schools, obviously, because this is where our children spend the majority of their time um, in, cl- in a classroom environment and working with teachers and support staff and teaching assistants and with parents. So we want to go into school and then ripple it out from there into the whole school and wide community beautiful it's, it seems to be like perfect mm-hmm. place to start rather than going into homes like mm-hmm. the school is where our children are most of the time it's their daily home basically yeah it? yeah so julie in terms of where you sit with this you're obviously really passionate about working with with kids and so forth I, i'm really curious about what had you want to work with with children as well like what had you want to work with this campaign i have been involved with the understanding around around the principles for the past since about 2014 when I was at school it wasn't a great experience and yet even though it wasn't a great experience I still always had a smile on my face do you know what I mean and, and I still always just had my ups and downs but I still knew I was okay you know what was happening and call that just my own gut instinct that I've always known I've had but quite often we see children that don't realise they've got that when they're going through bad times. Mm. And when I first came across the Spark Initiative, before they, they released their programme, I knew that what they had for the the older schools, for the high schools, was so important. So I signed up, trained and did all that. And it, for whatever reason, it didn't happen in, the, in the, the schools at that particular time. And we did go to some schools and the changes that we've seen in the kids were just they were amazing. I mean, you know, from from having young young men just wandering around the class and the school, just in his own little world, to like actually turning up on time for let's go into lessons, you know, because because he just made that was a huge difference in his life and it followed through the right years and the more we've worked with children I work with younger children as well the more that we see as Leanne said instead of firefighting instead of trying to go in when children have already been given labels when they've already been sort of got a reputation even you know and they've got that much thinking themselves because of what they've been taught from other adults from friends from you know just 
environment. They've been told that they're bad, that they they're broken, that you know everything they do is wrong. And is it any wonder that they live up to that label when they've got it? Hmm. So if we can actually go in and and work with the younger children when they actually don't have all of that preconceived thinking. They actually are the embodiment of living life, just living it. They are they are what we teach because not none of the hand can anything and get in the way of that. If we can literally get in every single school, not by going to get in, but not if when we get into every single school in the UK and further and, and actually just let everybody get a true understanding of what mental health is and not the perceived turn on its head understanding that it's a negative thing at the moment. When the course that we've all got mental health the definition is actual you know innate we have that and when people can see that the only thing that your your son let's take him for example he, he, he hurt somebody at school okay so in his mind at that time something happened somebody broke some internal rule that he had in his mind that they shouldn't have done and in that moment his thinking went I've got to do this and he reacted and he responded and it made sense for him to do that in the meantime, at it, it, that moment in time. Now, he's a little bit young, but, but he, the more that we can teach that we can have that thought. But we don't need to react on it. We, we don't need to act to it. But if, if we wait a few minutes, another thought's going to come across, mm. come along and totally change or what we're going to do. We could just go off and play with friends or have a water fight or, you know, that is whatever we're doing. Mm. Just teaching children that, yes, we can have those thoughts. But we don't have to act on them. And having those thoughts doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with us. Because sometimes children even think that. And, and it's not the case. It's We all have a wide variety of thoughts. I'm sure nobody would like to see my mind all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because we have good and bad thoughts. When our moods go up and down, it's natural. And when we can get into the schools, teach everybody this at such a young age that they are working perfectly well, that they can't be broken, that they don't need to believe every thought that they have and act and react to every thought that they can have. How much of a difference can that make moving forward? That's really cool. Like, um, it's really interesting that this this is a conversation we're having today because I, my insight on Wednesday was this exact thing. And I actually did a little video about it, which is I get hijacked by my own feelings. So how can I not expect my son to not to, right? Like that would be such a, like, how can I not expect him to get not, you know, not hijacked by them? And so um, I realize that I can get hijacked by my anger quite easily, Right as most moms can, most, I say not all of them, but most. And this is something, you know, recently I've been seeing a lot of books out there to have stop yelling and this and that. And, and I realized that, um, when I really think that I'm feeling and I need to act on what I'm feeling, then I get hijacked, but there is an alternative. There is an alternative. There is the, I'm going to go and sit in the toilet for five minutes and just go, I'm just taking some time out right now. Or, I'm just going to go and take, make a cup of tea. I'll be back in a sec. Um, and I had this realization where if I do more of that, that's something that Leo is going to see me do more of. And they act based on what they see. So I was like, ooh, okay, that's interesting to me. Maybe I'll do more of that and see what happens. But I have a question around, uh, of course, I've been in this understanding and I've seen a lot of stuff. For, for, for mums, for example, that are maybe, you know, been listening to this podcast, um, seen something for themselves. Like if they have younger children, because I really want to focus this on younger kids, we can maybe do in part two when we focus on older children. But but let's talk about younger kids because they can't really fully express verbally what's going on for them, right? They just feel a feeling and they act on it if they have no understanding of this understanding. But I've been told many times that actually you don't need to talk to them about it. They just need to, there's a, there's a, there's a sense of if mummy is coming back to her center more of the time, that that can actually be enough and that can do a lot for them. But I'm curious about, let's just say, for example, in this case, and I'll use Leo as an example because it's very fresh. And I think that for most people that are listening to this, it would be quite relevant to them. So in that moment, when he comes home and we have a chat, 
what would be the most useful thing? So Leanne, I'd love to, I'd love to hear your take on that and maybe Jules can pipe on in as well. Yeah, it's interesting that you were saying that you would take time out for yourself and lead by example. With my children, I've said to them and to help them understand people's behavior, if somebody raises their voice, it means that they've they've lost control of their thinking. So they're, they're in their thoughts and to close their ears. And that helps them to see that my behavior isn't personal to them. Mm. Um, because I've spent a lot of years prior to to um and to to being introduced to this understanding actually watching my children make meaning of my actions like watching intently trying to work out why I'm doing something a particular way to help them understand that anything I do and anything they do and anything the next person does or another person or any relative nothing is ever a personal it's always it's always internal. It's it's never a personal thing. My son actually pulled his teacher who was in a bad mood and and put his hand up and said, "My mum says you've lost control of your thoughts because you're shouting at us." <laughs> <laughs> and actually, she had because she'd had a, a on the way to school a stone had chipped her windscreen, so she was angry, and that was her experience of life from the minute she got out of her car in the car park. All of her interactions were through this angry. Mm. mood state that she was in so for me it's helping I kind of talk about if we're out and about and we see someone who's cross or we see a child that is doing something that's considered as naughty behavior we talk about it I'm constantly talking about this with my kids what do you think's gone through that child's head and straight away they'll be like yeah they're having a thought but it, it must be so intense that they, they can't take a step back so they've just gone with it they're, they're taking action on their thinking yeah, so I, I, rather than actually sitting down and talking about my own children's behaviour, I find it easier for them to understand when I talk up, when we're looking around us, even when we're watching the television, we're watching movies, um, as much as possible, I try and help them to, to kind of come back to that understanding that people are are reacting and taking action on their personal thinking on their thoughts Mm -hmm. and then we talk about how quickly a thought can pass so what do you think that person might have done if they hadn't have done that how do you think this movie would have ended how do you think that situation would have ended and just helping them to see the difference Mm -hmm. between allowing that thought to come and go or allowing that thought to come and doing something with it if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And I'm curious as to whether that works for all kids across the board. Cause I know that you say you work in primary and secondary and I'm mm. just wondering whether, but this is with my own children. So this is at home um, with my own children and Sophia is three. And even now she'll say to me if I'm like cross or grumpy because we're, we're not, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. And I do lose my temper because I've got four kids and they want to talk to me at the same time. And they all want, you know, to sit on my knee. I have sometimes have like a pile of children sitting on me. So I'm not perfect, but the, having them understand that is like a massive relief for me. So if I lose my temper at home, Sophia, who's three, will say, are you having silly thoughts, mummy? Mm. So she knows that my, my actions or my reaction is not personal to her. And that is like heartwarming for me because I know that she, she's got that. She's, she's, she understands how people behave and she understands people's behavior then. Wonderful. And is there any, any activities that we can do with the kids? I mean, obviously you've said, um, share movies, stuff, what you've, what you've shared today, but I'm just curious as to, is there anything else, especially the young? If you've watched the movie Inside Out, have you seen Mm. that one? Yeah. That's a really good movie for children to understand the temporary nature of emotions, because as you see, the characters switch. So when a character comes in, their, their kind of characteristics take over the child. So that movie is a fantastic little film to watch and then have a talk about afterwards so talk through so what happened when sadness touched the um, happy memories what happened to them they became sad and asking them about you know as as the different emotions approach the desk in the movie what happened to the child's behavior as these as the different emotions became the prominent person that was controlling the situation so I love watching that movie inside out Mm, beautiful and what about you Jules what are some of the things that you've seen that really worked for you and maybe your kids because you've got a daughter haven't you 
I, I've got a, I've got a thirty one year old and I've got a ten year old, so I'm a bit mad. And, and like Leon says, you know, I I was angry um, last week with Katie, and I and I, and I did I shout him? I did shout a little bit. I didn't I didn't really raise my voice shout, but my tone changed, and it was um, because. Oh, the amount of charge that she'd lost and the remote controls. And I'm like, well, if you keep lying on things, I won't have to constantly have to keep bloody well buying new ones. But then, then you know, I said, great, it's about time to go to bed. So, and then, yeah, I give out a case in the cuddles, I always do. Next year, I just apologised. I went, you know what, I'm sorry for being grumpy. And she was like, I know you were having some grumpy thoughts, weren't you? I went, yes, I was, and... You can still look after your things to stop losing them. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, there's no excuse that mummy's grumpy and you can't do that. <laughs> there's also the what I say to parents, and it doesn't matter how old the child is, because if you think about even a young baby, when a young baby cries, they can't tell us, as you said, they can't tell us what they want. So we look at... What could be behind the cry? We look at what's not the, we don't actually look at the cry as much. We look at the need behind it and we fill that in. And when our children get a little bit older, and right though, even as adults, the same thing applies. If instead of looking and, and reacting and responding and focusing on the behavior, if we look at the message behind the behavior and treat that, then what we tend to find is the behavior doesn't happen as much because we've dealt with the cause. And when we can, we obviously, it's also choosing our time to parent because there are times to parent and times not to parent. And it's there's no point in ever trying to parent a child who's having a meltdown yeah. because they're not <laughs> really going with that you were saying. Mm. They're too engrossed in those emotions. Mm. Time to parent is... After the meltdown, while you're having some hugs and you're having some good looks, I'm like, and actually what I do a lot is I bring the children into the solutions. Hmm. So I would say, you know what, that really wasn't very good for either of us. How do you think we could do it better in the future? Because one thing I found very much so is empowering our children tends to cut out so much of the the feelings of lack of control that children have got because they've just got to do as they're told all the time. Yeah. And when we actually bring them in and say, like, so if we, if we said to your son, okay, so really hitting wasn't the best thing to do in, in that situation. If it happened again, what do you think you could do? I do How ask him. You, yeah. Because he doesn't know. Okay, so, so if he doesn't know, you could maybe offer some ask alternatives him. and ask what he thinks about them. And, you know, you could really offer some, you know, wacky ones for him to realise that that's not an option. Mm. And so he's going to be able to choose his own again and maybe you know maybe improvise on some of the options that you come with with his ideas if he, when he's got some baseline ideas mm-hmm. Leanne's iPhone's died that's where she why she's disappeared uh, I kind of figured that that's what had happened <laughs> um the bain, this is basically the reality of motherhood yeah. sitting in a car and the, and the a phone dying <laughs> You know, it, it, it is. It's, it's 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 life, isn't it? We, we that's a hearing is a typical example. We can set our intentions. We can put the plans into place, and life happens. Mm. It happens, and things just don't go to plan sometimes. And when we can learn to just roll with whatever actually happens, and take our focus away from this has got to be a, a, a an iPod a an i podcast with two people on it and it has to go a certain way i mean just roll up and just go okay this has happened and now i'm sure (laughs) so there is something i want to ask you actually and it's something that i've been kind of reflecting on because my feeling and, and this is just an observation is that most solutions out there for children at the moment are very much based on changing their behavior yeah but looking at the behavior and actually going, they need to change the behavior, but but there's so much focus on the behavior. Let's change the behavior first and then figure out something later. Adults don't like the behavior. Mm. Adults have a preconceived set of rules and should be's, how a child should act. But a child's born into the world without those preconceived rules. They don't know them. So they're just acting in their thinking. <laughs> so, you know, we... we we say that if you think about any animal in the kingdom, they go through um, rough playing, um, fighting, 
establishing dominance, establishing looking after other people. They go through all of the same rituals that our children are doing and it's classed as wrong. And I understand we can't have children hurting each other. So, you know, I get that. But however, when we can see that one is part of it's actually natural behavior children acting out and children just responding to their thinking and two there's always a bigger message behind the behavior that we as adults can instead of focusing on they shouldn't hit somebody it's okay so what's going on was your son feeling not listened to was he feeling out of control was he feeling as though somebody was attacking him and he was responding what's the reason behind what he did because when you can deal with that and 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 work with him on that, then he won't need to do that hitting behavior again because this because the root cause has been dealt with. So I'm curious when you say work with, like so let's just take this as an example. When you say work with, what does that actually mean? Because any mum that's listening and going, well, yeah, I have got a child that's hitting out, that's acting out. I give him lots of attention, but still yet yeah, it's not. How do I work with that like what does work with it mean to me it means parenting from connection not from behavior to me it means and I know that parents spend some parents spend an awful lot of time energy money on their children and are always doing the best that they can I get that I'm certainly not perfect I'm more than enough mistakes myself and I know I'm still going to maybe even this afternoon and when when I say work with it, I mean check in with your thinking, check in with how how you're feeling and how you're responding, and is the way that you're feeling how is that influencing how you are with your child? Because when we have set rules that we don't even know we've got quite often until they're broken and those feelings of anger come up, what have they done that for? Why have they done that? How many times have I got to tell them? When we've got that narrative going in our head. Do you think we're going to have a conversation with a child that's getting heard and listened to? No. And that's what I mean when I say work with our children. We're working with, we're working with the connection on a human level, not a behavior level. And that makes all the difference when we can check in ourselves and, and check in with our children and say, right, from totally calm, non-judgmental place, and just say, what? Well, let's see what's going on. Let's see how we can make this better. This isn't making you happy. This isn't getting you where you want to be. And even as young as that, even how Leanne described it with Sophia, we all have silly thoughts sometimes that pop into our head and we think we've got to do something. Mm. But what do we what do we want when we do them silly things? And and even kids, they might not be able to always explain as eloquently, but they can tell you if somebody's took a toy off them or can tell you if somebody pushed them and and you know, so they reacted and responded back. There's always a reason for a behavior. Yeah, he got scared. I mean, the initial, f- it was in, it, he, because the, the little boy had said, t- but the interesting thing was the teacher said to me, it wasn't provocated. And I was like, mm. but that to me doesn't make sense because no child just decides to actually do something to a kid without any type of provocation. But she didn't see, to him, to Leo, to Leo's world, the little boy had said that, because that, Leo loves melon. Like loves it. He eats it every day. And the the boy was saying, melon isn't good for you or melon is dangerous or melon is. And Leo got scared. He got, he just got scared. And so when he was feeling those feelings of scared, he needed to do something to obviously get rid of them. So we, we, we talked about it and, and we were like, well, what can you do instead? And we, we had a bit of a, and I said, look, you know, sometimes it's just best to go and tell the teacher like just what else, what else, what else? And you're right. Like that there is just a whole, and I know like you and I know, right. We're just so stuck in our own, in our own ways of doing things that we do that too. It's like, well, I couldn't have done anything else. That was the only available thing to me. But then when you sit down and you open up and you're like, no, actually there's a whole bunch of stuff I could have done instead. But when we're in that, when we've got that tunnel vision. Yeah. That's what looks real to us. And, and, you know, even actually understanding that at that moment in time, that looked like the only option to our child. Sure. And it's not anything personal to 
to um, show the mums up in school, to show the mums up when they're at a play date, to show the mums up when they're at soft play, etc., etc. And their, their children aren't doing anything to wind mums up because quite often it can feel like that. I know, well. right? It's so personal. But if we're talking about it not being personal from our end, then it can't be. Exactly. When our children can know, you know, that it's, I'm, I, I get a bit carried away with this, I never shut up. When our children know that other people have those silly thoughts as well. So if, if, when, when the boy who was saying, um, Melon's bad for you, if it, if it can be understood that, you know what, that just looks like, that just looks real to him sometimes, but we know that Melon's delicious. <laughs> and then, and then I would, what I would probably have said is, I would have found something that he didn't like the taste of and said, but he might like it. Because isn't it great how we are all so wonderfully different mm-hmm. and the same? But of course, what happened was I got upset. I was in my own head because oh. it, it felt like yeah. his behavior was super serious to me, that he was going to turn into some sort of delinquent at the age of 15. Oh, yeah. We go, we, we <laughs> stories. And I was there. I was, I was off. I was off in the future about like how he... And you were parenting to the 15-year-old? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and so I couldn't see, I couldn't see like... And so my friend came over and she had a conversation with him. And uh, and yeah, and I have been... Yeah, and, and it was literally the next day that I went for that walk that I had that realisation. Um, but I love this idea of, of the sharing with them that everybody has silly thoughts. Even daddy has silly thoughts. Mummy has silly thoughts. You have silly thoughts. Yeah. But to also pick when that that conversation, because when it's he when he's tired, like there's just and no. don't make a long conversation either, because yeah. young children have got short mindsets, have got yeah. short attention zones. I mean, one thing I do with children, and I do it with nearly every child I work with, is I'll say to them, "Can you see that pink tree over there?" And they look at this and I go, "No, no. the face is a pink tree. Have a look, you can see it." And they're like, "They look at us as though I'm a little bit mad." And then just like, but look, tell yourself in your mind, I can see a pink tree. Can you sit now? I go, can now, can you see it? And they go, no. And that's because we don't need to believe all the thoughts that we have. And that's a really simple way of saying that they can have a thought in their head and they don't have to believe it. And it just can sometimes going to open the conversations up just for, we all have these thoughts popping into our heads all the time. And some of them we think, oh, that's real. And some of them we think, it's not a pink tree or really. And that's it. Is there anything else that, that, you know, from a, from a sort of, that's been really helpful that you've seen? Mood cockles. Oh, tell me more about that. It's that one of the best like, that, that sounds like, Leo, that sounds like something Leo would really be into. Share a little bit more. The kids that. Are. So if you go to a pound shop and buy a couple of pairs of different colored sunglasses, buy eight colored ones. Okay. Like, so like a blue ones and a red ones and a green ones and orange ones. And, you know, just, just the really cheap ones. And then explain that whenever you put those glasses on, that's how you see the world through. So if you've got red glasses, they're angry ones. So they're angry mood goggles. If you've got green ones, they are calm ones. And if you've got blue ones, they can be excited ones. And if you've got yellow ones, they can be sad ones. Or whatever limit you want to do. And just it, it explains that, just like the Inside Out movie, we can see through that goggles. We can have our mood goggles on. And we can see that mummy and daddy have mood goggles on as well sometimes. So sometimes if I'm being grumpy, I've got my grumpy mood goggles on. Sometimes you've got your tired mode goggles on and it explain it for, it's really, the kids love putting the goggles on as well. Because of course, like what's occurring to me, if you take a child to see somebody, let's just say, and they're really focusing on their behavior, but the child is tired. Yep. They're going to show a certain type of range of behavior that otherwise they wouldn't have shown if they were at home, right? You see a snippet of them. Right. So it's not like they've only taken like maybe an hour's worth, but if that in that hour that child is tired and they're grumpy, that's what they'll see. They won't see the child when they've just gone out of bed, when they've actually slept for 12 hours. And the child is actually much more in their true nature. Yeah. Right? That's what's that that's really so whenever you take them, it's really interesting, right? Because it depends on the mood that the child is in. <laughs> And if you take them to somebody who is looking for reasons to explain behavior and the child's grumpy, they're going to go, yeah, the child's got problems, they've got this, that, and the other. Because whatever we, whatever state of mind we look out of is what we see. So if yeah. we're looking for something, we're going to find it. Mm. And, and you know what? The amount of parents I know 
who will look at their children, who will, and, and it's natural, who will look at their children, their children's behaviours, and and look at, oh, there's something wrong with my child. This isn't normal. This isn't right. And then what happens is when they start looking, they start looking for more things to prove that they be back up. And, what, and the thing is, when they start looking for them, they start finding them. Mm-hmm. And because it's things that they would normally just let slide, not even think about. They look at like my daughter. She she's very much into this character called Miranda at the moment, and this Miranda wears this bright through her lipstick, right, right there. And she's got these movable faces. And literally, my daughter went out with lipstick right the way around yesterday, playing out in the street. And she come in and she was she does the voice. She can mimic her brilliantly. And you know, the haters are going to hate her. And our friends were thinking she's off a trolley. Who now there would have been a time when I was looking. She can't possibly go over there looking like that. <laughs> What people going to be thinking? I'm doing that too, and I would have been thinking that's not natural. She's just, and I would have seen it, and I would have looked for more behaviour to back it up. And yes, yeah, actually, she went out had a really good time. She was just having fun. Let her get on with it. Yeah, there's something really. I mean, I, I, I don't buy into this whole um, good boy, bad boy stuff, and it, and it, and it, and it, and it makes me go. Blah. because then it would suggest that there's good behavior and bad behavior when in actual fact there's just behavior yeah because all behavior is just neutral yeah and it's just an indication of our thinking which is neutral and we are all doing it all of the time and maybe there are more unhelpful behaviors and more helpful behaviors right for you also could go and pat his friend on the back and his friend can they can give him a cuddle and then look at him walk down the street because it's just been a hi, how are you doing, Pat? And you can go and do the same action to a different child and it's aggression. Right. The behaviour, it could be exactly the action, could be exactly the same. Mm. How it's perceived can be totally different. Mm. So there's all there's so much to look at. But you know what? Our children are never broken. Never. No. Never the copy. No matter, and I know I've been there where I've sat crying my eyes out because somebody said to me that, that he was a health visitor, who was an ex friend, who said that uh, she thought Katie was autistic. And when she was about six years old, and I was just like, I know she's got some specific behaviors which are on the spectrum, but you know, that was, I'm not going to label it. But then because somebody raised it and, and went to the extent of flipping writing a dossier out and handing it into the doctors for me because that's where she worked. Mm. And, and you know, I was in, I got into such a thought storm about it. I was looking at everything. I was like, is this proving it? Is this proving it? Is this proving it? Is this? And you know what? I had to say, get over yourself. She's just Katie. She's just your daughter being a daughter. And she's going to have things that some people are just think I'm a bit weird, but don't we all? I know. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Oh, well, I don't. well, I have yours then. <laughs> but mm. where parents can give themselves such a hard time because we don't get things perfect. But you know what? When we have children that don't come with a manual, no, we are literally learning on the job. But not only are we learning on the job, we're learning on the job with. With a baby, with a child, with a toddler, with a, you know, going through the years, with a little person who's never been that age, that state, that emotional thingy before, that level before, and they're learning as they go as well. Mm. How can there not be confusion at times in those situations? How can there not be? Mm. Because the child doesn't know how to be a two-year-old until they're a two-year-old. A two-year-old can't be a five-year-old because they don't know how to do that. They can only do that when they're five-year-old, and then it's new. Right. So th- there's always going to be new behavior arising yeah. based on their age because their level of understanding grows, right? So yeah. that's the other thing that I've seen with 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 this is, um, like, it's so interesting as a parent because we have expectations mm-hmm. of – of how we are. And then we, we, we project those onto our kids, but they are a different level of understanding, right? So they have a very different level of understanding of the world than we do. 
they can't, I can't expect my four and a half year old to have the level of understanding that I do based on the fact that I've been on the planet for like 44 years. That's, that's, that's huge. Yeah. Mm. This is what I say to people. Even you can't expect when people go into like the teenage years and they're like, oh, my daughter's a nightmare. My son's a nightmare. They're going to do this, this and this. They can't have an adult understanding because they haven't got an adult brain. It's not developed in that way yet. The prefrontal cortex isn't developed until between 21 and 24 years old. And it's my team just takes so <laughs> <laughs> And even then, I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah, some of the more. Exactly. <laughs> we, can, we can be so hard on ourselves. And you know what? As an adult, you tell me or show me one adult that has calmed down when they've been angry by being taught to calm down, yet we expect our children to. So what I'm really hearing you say is is that we have a whole bunch of unrealistic expectations of our children, really. With the best intentions. With the best intentions, of course. I mean, I have them too, right? It's like, why aren't you listening to me for the 500th time? I have an expectation that you should listen to me the first time. And then I realized, oh my God, like I don't listen to Leo all of the time. He goes, mummy, 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 mummy. And I don't answer. And he's like, why isn't she listening to mummy, mummy, mummy? Then you'll get a behavior. You get new attention. Sure. And I have been listening. I just haven't verbalized. (laughs) But the the message behind the behavior was wanting to be heard. Yeah. It's all communication. It really is. And when we can go into schools and when we can teach this to every single child, then that's what we need to do. Leanne's brought out an absolutely amazing um, magazine for children aged 5 to 10, and it's the Kids Being Kind magazine, and you can find that at www.kidsbeingkindmagazine.com. And and literally, it's a monthly subscription. It's like £2 if you want to order the online copy, and you can print it off yourself, or it's three seventy five for an actual paper copy to be sent out. And what's happening is it's 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 a win win situation because there's so much in there for parents to have easy conversations around mental health and act with activities with their children. And all of the profits from the magazine go to fund the workshops in schools. So not only are you helping yourself if you buy a magazine, not only are you helping yourself with your children but you're actually helping other schools. And if we're going to roll this out in all of the different countries, this is where it's going with your help as well. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. that's going to happen in schools as well, in other countries. But it's an absolutely fantastic resource mm. for parents to to talk to, to give them ways to talk to their children about being kind, about the science of kindness, about how they how they can interact with each other to talk about their emotions because a lot of the times parents don't know how to talk to their children about emotions when they were brought up their parents didn't do that so it doesn't feel natural sometimes mm. and this these monthly magazine gives you infinite ways of doing that and 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 a really child friendly engaging way so tell me a little bit more about the characteristics of the rainbow on the rock, because I'm curious about that. Like, obviously, um, that's a really big part of the branding. So I'm curious about, because we've talked about the nature of thought and how that comes out with our kids and we act on it and we don't act on it and we have these expectations, which is all created by thought. But let's just quickly turn to this sort of the characteristics of resilience. Right. So I'm looking at the, the rainbow. Yeah. So what we do is, um, I'm just looking for, make sure I get them right. So we've got, if you could see that there, we've got resilience. Mm-hmm. Confidence, confidence, creativity and wisdom. Creativity, wisdom and calm. So they're going to be our colours in our rainbow. And then we can look and see, you know, which part of the rainbow are we now? Mm. You know, what part of the rainbow do we want to be if we want to do something? So if a child wants to go and do something um, different, maybe they would want some confidence. Mm. And okay, so then you can you can tap into your yellow, and you know you can even if you want to use your mood goggles, you can put mood goggles on for them and just go. There you go. You put out your confidence zones on. You could, that's, there's lots of different ways we could do it. Um, creativity. If they want to invent something, they've got this all inside them. Or people will say, "Well, I'm not very confident." All not very confident is is a thought that you're not confident. 
I know. But that thought knows nothing about your ability to do what you're going to do. Mm. And that's proven so many times by after people doing something, they think, wish I'd known that before I did it. <laughs> so, so we can pick a rock and, and draw a rainbow on yeah, it. And you can just paint the rainbow. And, and we, you know, for schools, we, we're, we're getting the children to draw the rocks and paint them because obviously we don't want rocks being thrown around schools because it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Health and safety. But if you're at home with your child, yeah, you get a rock, go on a, go on a, a hunt for the perfect rock. Take the child out in nature with you and then, you know, look, have a little scavenger hunt and things like that as well that you can find. And find the perfect rock. And then that can be your mental health rock. And then you can come home and you can paint that with the colours and know that oh, you that rainbow's inside you. It's always shining, always there. And you know what? Sometimes to see the rainbow, we have to go through a little bit of rain. But it's the rain and the sun that make the beautiful rainbow. That's the how we sun is always there, right? The sun's always there. It's absolutely <laughs> horrendous looking out of my window now. It's, it's raining and it's dull and it's horrible, but the sun's still there. Well, we got some sun. It's the same sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The sun's always there. It's just not showing at the moment, but you know what? We need the rain as much as we need the sun. Thank you so much. Julie for this conversation so if anybody wants to contact you reach out how can they do that they can contact us on Facebook we have the my mental health rocks Facebook page if they are interested in the um the my mental rocks workshops that we're doing we have the shine movement Facebook page and that's for our parents as well mm-hmm. and that's at the sister company because one's for more the workshops and the others are for our parents on Facebook you can contact Leanne or myself directly on Facebook as well if you would like to do that and you can contact and find more information about the magazine at kidsbeingkindmagazine.com so thank you so much thank you once again for your incredibly kind donation and oh (laughs) you're so welcome as i said like the more people have this understanding in their back pocket the better quite literally their back pocket or on their or in their bag as you can see the books behind you thank you to (laughs) your suggestion right there i love it (laughs) Perfect. So yeah, for everybody that's been listening in, I hope that the, the little exercises uh, that, that have been mentioned here today and even like watching the movie Inside Out would be something that would be actually something tangible for you to go and do today to talk about this with your kids. Um, or the magazine because the magazine, the magazine, if you order the online magazine, you get the you can get it straight away and within, you know, within... I think it's downloadable as soon as you purchase it. It's two pound, you know, which is what two euros if you're there. And and then you've literally got things you can go print out and do with your children as activities for during the holidays as well as engaging in conversation around how we're never broken. So yeah, I mean, amazing. So thank you so much for doing this and it'll be coming out very soon. So watch this space. Bye-bye for now. And there we have it. Another amazing episode of The Joy of Being to accompany you during this crazy time of year. Remember, you're not on your own. You can reach out and you're okay no matter what. If you are tired of the insanity and the juggle that summer brings, remember to get in touch for your free instant mum relief accelerator call worth £500 at bit.ly slash instant mum relief. That's bit.ly slash instant mum relief and book your call there. So until next week's episode, remember you are the joy you seek.